This was how the Saturday morning began in Milolii, known as the last fishing village in Hawaii. Ne. Chanting on the shore in the direction of the sea, led by Heolani Cahill and Shafton Kaupu Kabuag, along with the next generation of Hawaii. For the first time in Milolii's modern history, the village formally opened the Opelu season. It's part of what Milolii is famous for, the iconic Opelu fishing tradition practiced for generations. This year, however, is a little different. The small village had recently gotten some help. A $92,000 grant from the National Oceanic Atmospheric Association's Bay Watershed Education and Training Program is making the Milolii Opelu project possible. Pa'apono Milolii is the nonprofit 501c3 that is administering the grant. The organization is dedicated to improving the lives of the residents of the native Hawaiian fishing village. According to Pa'apono Milolii, the purpose of the program is to significantly enhance the marine and coastal knowledge base and stewardship action of Milolii's population of K-12 through students. The hope is to blend traditional Hawaiian fishing education with contemporary science and marine management and stewardship practices. The grant is for fiscal years 2013 and 2014 and began October 1, 2013. Kaimi Kaupiko is one of the residents who's been instrumental in getting the program going. Oh yeah, you know why I ask a lot of questions and I and I I believe in in this and 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 that's important if you stand by those beliefs and you believe that this is a project that um needs to be put forward and uh, we'll fight for it and I think that's why today is this Apollo project is, is here. On Saturday, the village was blessed with the use of three Koa outrigger canoes, built for racing but otherwise an appropriate fit for the occasion. If we can, try, try not to lean out to the right side of, the, of your canoe. Try to, do every, try to do whatever you have to do on the left side, on the ama side, if possible. It's just that if every, all of us lean on the right, off to the right side, we can huli. And that would be that would, be, that would present a lot of problems. <laughs> the coal canoes do not have the flotation tank in the, in, the, in the bow and the stern like the fiberglass canoe. So once it fills up with water, it won't sink, but it will float under the surface of the water and will be stuck. In the outer canoe, the Kueni Paula canoe, we got uh, Noah Allen from Waianae. Kai Ali'i Kaheli introduced the four Milo'li'i Opelu practitioners, Craig Carvalho, Kukulu Kuahuia, Willie Kaupiko, and Meha Teatuna. You know, these canoes can flip over. So, you know what I mean? So, all we gotta do, everybody gotta equalize, you know what I mean? Battle lean together. To left, yeah, yeah, kinda <laughs> lean on the other side, not lean on the other side because we're gonna flip this bugger over. I know, I battle canoe and all this guy. We're gonna do a little uh, blessing. First. Once the canoes were in the water, Kai led our camera to the action out on the ocean aboard a motorboat. First, an appropriate blessing was performed. As Kaupiko told us, the day demonstrated the unique relationship between the Opelo and the villagers. Four of our practitioners go out with the future generation of our community and what they did was feed, which is Hanai, our fishing cause, which is the Opelu, Koi Milolii and um, Omoka'a, and uh, there's about three spots. At times the connections seem personal. Often practitioners, like Uncle Willie, would summon the Opelu by slapping the canoe. Oi, 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 oi! LMI, oi, LMI, oi! A wave of excitement hit the group the moment the Opelo were first spotted. A variety of special tools were deployed to find and feed the fish. And they were able to 
bless and thank the fish and um, feed them during the season. Put the, the lead in the in the eye bag and it goes down and, it, and it's been able to feed the fish about 40 feet down in the water. The food that was used was a particular mix of vegetables known as palu, something that's been used for generations. Pumpkin, like the vegetables, pumpkin, taro, we scraped them the traditional way and then we went out there and we fed them in the in the, the fishing grounds. And the villagers say that Palu needs to be strictly vegetarian. No chop chop, as they say. Fish chum is frowned upon. Uh, no, no, we, we're not trying to do that anymore because what we see is that it's it's taking away uh, the cycle that we, we you know we really want to implement because that's what our kupunas did uh, you know, of 60, 70 years ago. And they knew by feeding them the chum is not good. So by feeding them the um, vegetables and, and and hanai them the whole year we'll get for the season and we'll be able to feed our families and and make a living this was not a fish hunt as we learned the term that was used repeatedly was hanai a hawaiian word which can mean to nourish to sustain or in a sense to adopt is hanai our fishing cause when the moment was right the net was lowered and the morning's catch was revealed it's all part of what Kaimi and the others are working so hard to preserve. I need to preserve that tradition that my dad and, and a lot of our uncles and aunties and Kupuna before him practiced. And I, and I hope to see it. Um, hoping we can do justice to that a little you know I know we can't solve all the problems but we can kind of address a lot of the concerns that we see is important to fixing and preserving this way of life.